What's going on YouTube? I am back. So we're here to talk about a couple of Wokies, a couple of SJWs getting wrecked. I think we got three in total. We're going to be checking out some videos. It can't get any better than that. And we may have a couple of other things as well. But as I always say, first up, if you want to help me out, hit the like button and subscribe button as well. And if you do hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit all notifications because I'm struggling here. But let's start here. They never resisted. They were afraid to be accused of racism. And I think this is very apt, in particular, in regard to Europe at the moment. And then I saw this one here. This study revealed that women are happier with ugly men. <laughs> and that guy says, why they do my man like that? Look, that is pretty harsh. Okay? <laughs> but don't worry about it. I'm pretty sure that guy is actually a famous tennis player, possibly from Thailand, but I could be wrong. I remember his face from the Australian Open. He's doing all right. Don't worry about him. Now, this one here. Look, this is horrifying. War crime level stuff here. This should not be going on. This is like, forget about the Middle East, right? Forget about Ukraine. This right here is the real tragedy that's going on right now, okay? People are peeling nuggets. What kind of sick, twisted, Dharma level freakazoid are we dealing with here? But let's get to the first Wokey, the first SJW getting wrecked by Charlie Kirk. This one here is about race and crime. Check this out. Come up to the mic and call me a racist in my face. Are you an intellectual coward and want to shout it from 30 feet away? Come on up. Shut, come on. Shut, call me a racist. What have I said that's not factual or not true or anything that I've said that's racist? Name one thing. Yeah. Black people are 13% of the population and they commit 50% of the murders. You can look it up. Over, please. Wait, you, you. What's your source? The FBI, the Department of Justice. You look it up. Anyone can look it on your phone. It's, it is a fact that blacks have a disproportionate amount of the violent crime in their community. Y'all can understand statistics. How you speak on numbers. That, that guy's first response was over policing. Really? Really? You stupid idiot. What the hell are you talking about? The thing about that particular statistic, I mean, it's very informative, especially if you haven't heard of it before. It is actually true. It's actually, I think it's actually worse than that now. It's 13%. Well, in fairness, it's about 6.5% because women don't actually commit many violent crimes. So it's about 6.5% commit over 50% of the homicides in the United States. Which group that is, I can't say. And there's no way to justify it. There's no way to say, oh, it's, it's because of poverty. But when you match that to white communities who are equally in poverty, the same thing doesn't happen. And now we've got this one here. Okay, so this uh, pro-Palestinian protester, Riddy Patel, threatened to end the Bakersfield mayor in a psychotic rant during a city council meeting. Okay, and look, I can't believe I have to say this, but I will. I'm obviously not endorsing in any way what this woman is saying. I'm, I'm posting what she's saying for context. So she is going to make violent threats in the video I'm going to show you. I don't actually support what this woman's saying. I think she's a fucking nutcase. <laughs> but I need to show up for context. Check this out. Hi there, my name is Riddhi Patel. I'm here to speak in support of the City Council introducing a ceasefire resolution, specifically the one um, United Liberation Front um, has drafted. I don't have faith that you'll do this. You guys are all horrible human beings and Jesus probably would have killed you himself. And I understand that you guys are all horrible people, but the thing is that these holidays that we practice, that other people in the global south practice, believe in violent revolution against their oppressors. And I hope one day somebody brings the guillotine and kills all of you motherfuckers. Regardless of whether you elect people into office, they'll backstab you, they'll let you die, and for that reason, you guys want to criminalize us with metal detectors, we'll see you at your house. We'll murder you. Next speaker, please. Lance, followed by Kev, followed by Valeria. Ms. Patel. Ms. Patel. That was a threat, what you said at the end, and so the officers are going to escort you out and take care of that. Firstly, I mean, what does she expect? A Bakersfield council, <laughs> a Bakersfield council to do about problems in the Middle East? It's like some resolution for what exactly, right? 
it's just completely foolish. Activist cries in court after arrest for threatening to murder Bakersfield City Council members. The ceasefire activist who threatened to murder members of the Bakersfield Council made her first court appearance pleading not guilty to all charges. A deputy public defender entered not guilty pleas on Patel's behalf to eight counts of threatening a public official and ten counts of making terroristic threats. She's due back in... Nasty indeed. Riddy Patel breaks down in court after receiving 16 felony charges, including terrorism. Jesus Christ. I mean, I'm pretty sure if they wanted to, they could put this woman away for an extremely long time. <laughs> oh, no. No. But that's what you get. You have lots of these leftist activists out there who think they can pretty much say whatever they want and get away with it. And someone finally calls them out, calls them out on their crazy rhetoric, this is what happens. So we have some of the info about the charges here, um, threatening certain state officials, judges, etc. Eight counts, that's not good. And here we have uh, 10 counts of threatening with intent to terrorize. Look, I think this woman not being able to control her mouth um, is in a very, very bad situation. <laughs> very bad indeed. And here we got the Don telling us exactly what happens when you vote for Biden. What has he done that's good? Nothing. Has anything that he's done turned out? Everything he touches turns to shit. <laughs> no lies there. Shout out to the Don. And now we have the last, the last SJW wokey getting wrecked. This one is David Hogg. You may have heard of him in the past. One of these far left clowns. Hi, my name is uh, Lily Tang Williams. Welcome to my live free or die state. Actually, I am a, a Chinese immigrant who survived communism. And uh, under Mao, you know, 40 million people were starving to death after he sold uh, communism to them. And 20 million people died, murdered during his Cultural Revolution. So my question to you, David, is that can you guarantee me a gun owner tonight our government in the U.S., in D.C., will never, never become a tyrannical government. Can you guarantee that to me? There's no way I can ever guarantee that any government will not be tyrannical. Well, then the debate on gun control is over because I will <laughs> never give up my guns. Never, never. And you should go to China to see how gun control works for dictatorship of CCP. We see this very often with these leftists, these wokies in the West who promote communism. They think it's going to be some type of utopia. But whenever they've tried that in any country, it's turned out to be a disaster. And they're always saying, oh, they just didn't do it right. They just didn't do it right. I mean, why would you keep promoting this stupid idea that's never worked? But, that, but that's what's going on. Hope you're having a good day as always. And as I always say, get the peons the hell out of my stinking house.